In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can create amazing textures and then use the power of geometry nodes to spice up your scenes just that little bit more. Let's jump into the shading tricks. Now we all know there's three main techniques for texturing. PBR textures, image textures, and procedural textures with fancy math. They all have their advantages and disadvantages, and I'm sure you've tried them all and gone, wow, this looks kind of average. I mean, it's all right, like... But what if I told you that to create the ultimate material, we have to combine all three methods? Let's jump into Blender to make some sick textures. We have our basic PBR texture set up here, but it's looking pretty boring. So to make it more interesting, we've got to mix some shaders together. But to do that, first, we need to understand the concept of masking. You guys may have heard of masking before, but maybe not in Blender. It's essentially just using black and white values and then in between to control where you place things. Black is zero and white is one. So let's use this concept of masking in our texturing. We're going to duplicate our principal BSDF with a Node Wrangler add-on enabled, Control shift right click over the other principal BSDF. And now we get our mix shader and they're all connected up. Let's set this base color to an image texture. Control T, open this up to some dirt, link below. So it looks kind of weird right now. And that's because this factor is set to 0.5. So it's saying half of the texture and half of our dirt. And so we get this weird thing. To fix that, let's add our now mask. Grab an image texture, set it up with some mapping nodes. We can control the scale of it. Add in a color ramp. This is important to increase the contrast. Plug it all in. Let's open up our image. We're just going to use a free surface imperfection off Polygon, link below. Let's grab this black and white one. Now, just drag the color ramp handles to your liking. Let's make this smudge's texture bigger. So we can just grab the scale with shift and just drag that up. If we bring the white pretty high up, you can see we're getting these really cool dirty smudges on our texture. Damn! And with the magic of editing, we can add in some puddles. And just like that, we've got some puddles. These bits here, they're a reflective BSDF that I added in with the same technique as before, but just using a noise texture. So I have finer control over where the puddles are. Now we've got our sick texture, but it's still not fully realistic, nor does it tell a story of what's been happening here. So that's where we're gonna add in some trash using geometry nodes instancing. But if you don't wanna learn any geometry nodes or model anything, check out my add-on Trashed, where you get 40 plus assets, it's fully procedural, and it's based on geo nodes. So it's very customizable, easy to edit, and you can just slap it in to any scene and it will make them 10 times better. Trust me, go check it out, link below. So if you've stuck around and you wanna add some trash to your scene, let's go. So to model the trash, you wanna get a trash image off textures.com. The link will be below, just pick one of them and then load it into Blender in a image editor off to your workspace. You could do this one here, which has a lot of different random pieces of trash. Or if you just want cigarettes in your scene, you could use this one here. And then what you wanna do is just start modeling things based off what you see over here. So just add in a cylinder, for example, scale it down, maybe add in some loop cuts because then you can turn on proportional editing grab some vertices and just make this a lot more natural. Now this can be super basic because no one's gonna see this up close. Then once you're happy with how your trash is looking, add in a new material and just hook up this image to the color of the principal BSDF. Then go into edit mode, go from the top and go U, project from view. Now go into material preview so you can see what you're doing and then grab it in the UV editor, scale it down, rotate it and just line it up with one of these cigarettes. Cool, now you have one bit of trash, you can just duplicate this one and line it up to a different cigarette, maybe change a little bit of the geometry, do that a couple times, and then you'll have some variations of your trash. Now that you have all your assets modeled, you just chuck them in the collection, call it whatever kind of trash it is, and now you have it here, easy to access. Let's duplicate our plane here, because we need something to add our geometry nodes modifier to. Change this workspace to the geometry node editor. Now let's just add in a geometry node modifier, because that's what it is. Now it's just a node editor. So now we can just drag this one back, and we want to add in a distribute points on faces node. We just want to change this from random to poison disk. So we have our density here, which is of course just how dense these points are. And then we have our distance min, which is the minimum distance that each point has to be from each other. But we don't want to just distribute these random points on the face. We want to distribute our cigarettes. So to do that, we're going to go instance 
on points. So now it's going to instance something on these points that it's been given. And we want to instance our cigarette collection. So let's just add in a collection info node, open up the cigarettes and plug instances, insta instance. Now let's change this to relative and go separate and reset children. But you can see here, it's putting all of the cigarettes on each point. So to do that, we can just tick pick instance. So it picks a different cigarette for each instance point. But now we want to change the rotation of these so it's random because otherwise it looks pretty stupid that they're all pointing in the same line. So to do that, we're going to add in a random value node, change this from float to vector and plug this value into the rotation. Then we want to set the X to zero, the Y to zero and just change this value, which is the Z rotation to something like 20. So they're all now pointing in different directions. Let's use a random value for scale as well. Now we want to change the values, so let's make it closer to one. So this is all up to you now what you want to choose here, but that's basically it. Now we have our cigarettes on our plane. So if that technique seems cool to you and you want some sick trash that's easily controllable, check out trash down below. And so for the final tip, I'm going to teach you guys about ambient occlusion and why it's the best thing to use with trash. So let's add in the ambient occlusion node. Let's add in a color ramp plug the ambient occlusion into that and then control shift click on the color ramp to see what it's doing here. Now you might notice as we drag this slider up in the color ramp, the black is coming out from underneath the cigarettes. That's because ambient occlusion generates a black and white map depending on where objects are near or touching the object that you put it on in the shader editor. Ambient occlusion only works in cycles, so keep that in mind. But now with our black and white mask, we can mix in a texture based on where other objects are near our main object that we're texturing. So for example, we can duplicate this principal BSDF, hook it up with another mix shader, change the color to maybe some green. So it's like a moss is growing underneath these cigarettes, make it rough again, and now plug this ambient occlusion value into the factor of the mix shader and connect that up to the material output. Now's about the time you might be going, what the heck's happening here? And that's because the ambient occlusion is doing the opposite of what we want it to do, where black is this texture here and white is our texture here. We want that to be the opposite. So all we need to do is add in a map range node and change this to min one max zero. And now if we control shift click on this, it's flipped. So now if we control shift click back on the mix shader, now you can see our cigarettes have a little bit of dark grunge around them. And now that really makes them look like they've been in this scene for a while. And the best part is ambient occlusion is a smart mask. So now if we add in a cube, you can see we're getting some moss around the edges here. And that's because the ambient occlusion is calculating that grunge for that cube being there. So now we can really just put whatever we want in our scene and now we'll be adding in moss whenever we do. Now you can see what combining these techniques can do to your textures. They really elevate them and make them look amazing. These techniques have really helped me in your, my scenes, so I hope they help you. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out my ad on Trashed. I think you'll find it really useful. Anyways, keep going with Blender. You got this.